Thank you very much, Larry. Um, I'm going to make a few remarks um, because we're talking today about implementation in particular, and I'm going to talk about how the VA Office of Research and Development has supported the clinical implementation of genomic services in the VA. Um, so several things about the Office of Research and Development. We fund over 90 projects uh, in, uh, that have something to do with genomics, um, and uh, ranging from basic to clinical to even rehabilitation, and uh, now health services research and development. Um, we also have a number of high-profile initiatives, such as the Million uh, Veteran Program. I'm going to be talking today primarily about our T3 and T4 efforts to um, explore and examine how implementation is of genomic services is happening in the VA. And uh, one way that we've connected with the clinical services is through a new process that we describe as partnered research. So as we were developing uh, projects in health services research, um, examining the implementation of genomic medicine in VA, we were simultaneously working very closely with Larry on his clinical efforts, and Larry attended many of our meetings, gave us feedback on our priorities, our research focus and direction. This new process of partnered research pairs up uh, health services researchers with uh, key clinical and operations decision makers in VA. So it allows uh, the research to more closely inform the VA clinical implementation effort. And so uh, there are three, um, although health services researcher, uh, research has funded over I think 15 research projects. There are three in particular that I think uh, link with some of Larry's efforts most closely. Uh, one is led by Maren Schooner at um, Greater LA, and uh, that project really seeks to examine uh, and test methods of implementing Lynch syndrome screening in the VA. Another project uh, at uh, San Francisco and at the Durham VA, originally led by me, uh, now led by Don Provenzali at Durham, uh, seeks to examine how genomic services for Lynch syndrome are incorporated into routine clinical care for veterans diagnosed with colon cancer. And that project really examines the pathways of care and coordination in care in an established integrated healthcare system that's been integrated for quite some time now, and how do we introduce new types of clinical services into the system. So that uh, project addresses those issues. And then finally, um, one of our projects at Ann Arbor VA, led by Angela Fagerlin, examines how we should be communicating probabilistic information that we often need to communicate uh, when we're talking about genetic testing and, and genomic services, uh, working with veterans, many of whom uh, are cared for in the VA, have lower health literacy, lower numeracy. And so how do you communicate that complex probabilistic information to veterans to support their decision making? Um, there are a number of uh, different opportunities, I think, that the VA brings. Um, and Larry mentioned some of them, and I'm going to just go into a little bit of detail about them. Um, one is the VA actually gives us a great opportunity to look at equity, um, because many of the veterans enrolled in care in the VA are of lower income, lower socioeconomic status, and lower health literacy, lower numeracy. So it really gives us an, ex um, an opportunity to examine health equity in genomics. Um, another reason why um, uh, research and uh, clinical linkages in uh, integrating uh, genomics into VA is important is that we have a number of um, models of integration of um, specialty care and generalist care that allow us to examine uh, uh, different pathways of care and also help us look at how health professions should be educated about genomic medicine. And then finally, our um, electronic medical record system 
and uh, our uh, decision support systems within that electronic medical record system give us great opportunity to understand the best methods of decision support. And then related to that, um, one of the things in the projects I mentioned, we're looking at ways of studying the electronic medical record that can tell us more about how uh, genomics is um, integrated into care by using natural language processing. So when uh, new services are integrated into uh, a healthcare system, they are not often common events. So we start with uncommon events, uncommon services that are built up over time, and using natural language processing provides a very rigorous way of examining the medical record beyond medical record abstraction, which is the gold standard that we often think of. And so I'll close there to allow a chance for questions. Thank you very much. Great, thank, thank you very much. Um, so questions for our VA colleagues. I'm interested in hearing a little more about how you're using uh, more advanced informatics to extract information out of the VA medical record. So you, the, just expand a little bit on the very last comment that you made. Uh, yes, so um, in uh, several of our studies, we um, are building data sets um, using VA administrative data as well as clinical data. And so the most comprehensive data sets includes all inpatient records, outpatient records, um, fee basis, which allows us to examine care at um, the um, other uh, uh, medical centers that we use, uh, usually at our university affiliates to VA. And we have full text data on the records of our entire population of veterans diagnosed with colorectal cancer. And so at this point in time, we are starting to develop the ontologies that we need to develop to understand um, a number of things. One is how family history is documented in the VA medical record. Another is to look at the analysis of uh, molecular analysis of tumor tissue, uh, genetic testing in VA, and um, in addition, uh, referral to um, uh, consultations with uh, geneticists and genetic uh, uh, counselors. And so, uh, because some of these events um, in the VA are going to be rare in the beginning, um, using NLP, we believe, is going to allow us a much uh, better way of examining the integration. Hi. Uh, could, could you um, illuminate a little bit what is driving the um, genetic workload that you showed, the increasing? Is that all Lynch syndrome, or do you have other projects like Lynch syndrome that you're putting through implementation and outcomes research? Uh, so, so it's really all over, all over the map. That, that's just clinical. So uh, in, in building out a clinical service, we're cl clearly coordinating with research. And I, I'm a researcher at heart. Uh, but uh, I, I expected way over half of that to be Lynch syndrome. We are instituting universal Lynch syndrome screening uh, once we get into every VA and, and getting the lab um, lab handled for that and the information flow uh, is, is, is ongoing. Uh, but I would say it represents probably less than a third Lynch syndrome, uh, probably uh, a third uh, BRCA1, especially after Angelina Jolie's announcement last week. Uh, we saw a, a huge bump, some, something like the Betty Ford bump. I, I, I expect it to go down, but right now we're swamped with consults. Uh, we see a fair amount from neurology. We do a fair amount of perinatal. Uh, right now, the, the uh, population of the VA is 6% women, uh, but a lot of those women are younger and are of childbearing age. Uh, so I'm really surprised at the amount of perinatal genetics that we're doing. Uh, and then there's cardiology, pharmacogenetics all over the map. Uh, it seems like that's really informative to help maybe guide where some of the additional um, HSR types of projects might go is where the demand is from some of the users. Uh, yeah. I have one other question. In the spirit of connecting the dots, um, if, if we wanted to get a catalog, if you will, of, of all of the genomic medicine research that the VA is currently undertaking, uh, is there an obvious place to go if we wanted to look for synergies between 
what NHGRI is doing and what the Air Force and other programs are doing. Maybe there are some collective learnings there. Would there be an obvious place where we could understand where that information resides? Yeah, so, so I, 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 I have some knowledge of the ORD things. I, th I think Ron Przodzki back there is probably the best person to answer. My understanding is that it's probably 120 or 130 individual uh, awards. I think we have 91 currently funded, yes. Uh. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, 91, but think of it this way. If you're looking at 9,000 schizophrenic, 9,000 bipolars, and a 20,000 reference cohort, that's one study. So yeah. you have to put that in that perspective as well. But if you need any of that information, just contact me. Yeah, and, and I, there is a, a good genomics page on ORD. I, I had add a comment about the, the VA medical record system and, and the consortium. I, you know, doing, doing phenotyping for research through natural language processing I think is excellent, but I'm not sure it's adequate for doing uh, CDS at the point of care. And, and so I, I think we do need more structured information. Uh, you know, you can milk stuff out of family history uh, for, for a research study. But if, if you're trying to actually recommend whether a referral or a test is appropriate, I, I don't think that's the best, uh, the best way to go uh, in the long term. So we really need to move towards more structured information as we can. I'm not sure if this is a question for Larry or Susan. I know that for some veterans served by VA, they're also getting care um, in the, the, yes, and elsewhere. Do any of your projects capture that? Uh, yes, the San Francisco Durham project does capture uh, dual care. So if they were getting the testing elsewhere? Yes. Just maybe one, one last question. Larry, could you describe a little bit more the, the telemedicine model that you're using? This is for genomic counseling for returning results, for consent, for all of the above, or how does that work? Uh, sort of for all of the above. Uh, we only get testing in, uh, I think, a little less than half of all of our consults. A lot of it is just, uh, a lot of them are e-consults to the provider. There's a lot of times we'll uh, contact the veteran and determine <laughs> that the testing is not appropriate. Um, and, and so it, it's all over the map. Uh, if we are consulted and if a test uh, is ordered, we do pre-test counseling and follow-up post-test counseling. One of the things that I'm fairly manic about is ownership and stewardship of, of the results and data, and so that we close the loop and inform the, the patient, uh, make sure the patient knows how to inform their family, um, and, and all, all of that documented appropriately, communicate with the entire provider's team locally. So do you have a, a manual um, for, for doing that or a set of standard operations that you might be interested in sharing with other groups that are trying to do something similar? I think it's fair to say that SOPs are in preparation. This is, you know, very much, you know, design the plane while you're flying. Oh, absolutely. And there, there are others designing similar planes, and, and golly, wouldn't it be nice to build off the, the efforts that y'all are doing? So, so if there's some way, you know, we should talk later sure. about that, that'd be great. It's sort of like the magnificent men and their flying machines. That's what we're kind of looking like right now, I think, all of us. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. With similar <laughs> Okay. Super. All right. We're, we're running a little behind, but we're allowing time for discussion, and the discussion is, is in, in many ways the most important part of the meeting, so we don't want to don't want to inhibit that. So any other comments? Or? If not, why don't we go ahead with uh, Dr. Sessions from the Air Force, who will talk about PC2Z.